DaVinci Resolve 20.3 is out right now, so let's take a look at my top four favorite new features. Edit menu action to insert a gap at the playhead. Insert gap is an amazing new feature and it's found under the edit menu, insert gap, and it basically opens up your timeline. It, what it actually does, besides just push everything down to the side and open up a little gap there, which is gonna help you pace out your edit, is this actually also has the ability to make a cut in your timeline. So if I wanted to place a cut down here and have it move, everything move down to the right, and I did this command, it can do that. So that's different than the old method where you would hit Option or Alt-Y to select everything to the right of the timeline, use the number pad. Let's say I wanted to do plus uh, two seconds, so I'd go 200 return. We don't have to do that anymore. We have more power with Insert Gap. Now, I don't want to come up here every single time to go use this command. So I'm going to set this to a keyboard shortcut, and I'm going to do that under the DaVinci Resolve keyboard customization menu. Look for the new command called Gap, Insert Gap. And I'm going to set it to the G key for G for gap. Kind of makes sense. The only thing is it is already assigned to the flag to add a flag to a clip. I don't use that a lot, so I'm going to do it anyways. But because I don't want a keyboard conflict, I will come over here where I have add flag, and I will just remove that, and I'll save this as a new layout. We'll call this one demo, and we'll just leave it at that. So now anytime I want to create a gap down here in my timeline to paste something out, just hit G and I don't have to go to that menu. Now, if you'll notice, it basically had a default duration here. If I hit X for X marks the spot, it made a gap of one second. That actually came from your default stills editing preference. So if you don't want it to be one second when you hit that every single time, just come up here to preferences user editing and change your standard still duration to something else. Maybe we want the gaps to be two seconds. If I hit save, the next time I come down here to the timeline and I want to insert a gap, maybe I want to insert a gap there, I'll hit G. Now this gap here, if I mark the spot, is two seconds. But wait, there's more, just like an infomercial. What I discovered is you don't actually have to rely on those specific still durations to insert a gap duration. What you can do instead is just place the playhead where you want to create the gap, maybe right here between these audio waveforms, and go straight to your number pad. So this is why it's so nice to have a number pad. I'm gonna hit plus eight to create an eight frame gap here. Again, at 24p, eight frames is a beat to me. So eight frames is something I go to a lot. So I did plus eight, and then all I'm doing now is I'm going to hit the G key, which is I, what I had ins assigned to insert gap, and check that out. It obeyed the duration I punched in with the number pad. So we have an eight second gap. The other thing to know is it, it obeys all your auto track selectors, your sync locks over here. So it's gonna keep things in sync if you got long, long timelines. Another keyboard shortcut, this one's to open in timeline with the source viewer. And this is specifically for timelines as far as I can tell. So this is great for those of us that work with uh, selects string outs to go from one timeline to another timeline. Option Command K, or Alt Command K is gonna open up our keyboard customization to get access to this quick action item. So open in timeline. Before, I believe this was just a, a right-click option. So I'm going to set this to Option or Alt-Q because it's similar to a toggle function that already exists built into the software. So I'm going to hit Save, close out of here. And the idea here is I'm able to navigate my bins over here, my, my timeline full of, my bin full of timelines, and not have to do anything other than keyboard shortcuts. So the way you can get to your bins, one is going to be Command-1 gets me to my bins. So let's say I want to get to my, my cuts bin here, and then I want to get over to what's inside of there. I hit Command-2, so it's Command-1 to get to the bin list. Command-2 is going to allow me to arrow through all my timelines in here. Maybe I want to load up just my selects timeline in the source, the left side. Now we can hit Option-Q, and you'll see now we're in source view mode for, it's basically this left window, so it's all the stuff before I put it onto my creative timeline. I can come over here and mark a, a selection of a shot. Maybe I, f I want to find something like right here, mark an in point, mark an out point, toggle to the record side. You don't actually have to toggle to it. It'll still edit directly to it, but I'm going to do that so you can see. So blue means this window, orange means this window. And once I do that, I can easily stick this anywhere on this timeline that I want it to go. Let's say I just want to get it onto the timeline at the end. I can just hit the append key on my DaVinci Resolve Editor keyboard and I'm able to get that select added right down there to the end of the timeline. Again, it could be using any of the, the three-point editing commands. The nice thing about this, again, is just I can use Command-2 to get to my bin list. I want to open that up as a source timeline, Option-Q. 
I can now see all of those. And you can think of working more in timeline to timeline mode and less of individual clip to timeline mode. Craft editors love this. Manually named timeline backups. At any point now, we can create a new timeline backup that is retained within the original timeline. So if I just right click on a timeline over here, we have a new option, it's called Create Timeline Backup. And maybe I just call this one Sammy Roto Backup 1, and I give it my own date, whatever I wanna do, hit Create. And that's available to be restored right from that moment. So if you wanna ever restore a timeline backup, you just right click on it, you come down to restore timeline backup and here's my specifically named backup which was uh you can see it's got the weird dating it does it starts with the day month year but it was taken right at eight o'clock this morning and i can restore to that at any time custom media pools are now retained hooray i love this one so in the media pool you'll notice there is our ton of columns in here and i don't generally need to see all of them so now if you right click at the top here, say customize columns, we actually have an option to say remove all fields, which that didn't exist before. So this is great. You used to have to go individually check all those. We can build our own custom layouts in here that should be saved and, and retained. So let's do resolution, frames per second, format, maybe video codec, maybe date modified. Um, you know what else I love is clip color. Let's see if this search window works. Clip color, sure enough. And so I've got all of those available and we've got a dot, dot, dot menu, which means, yep, we can save as a new preset. We'll call this one Chadwick. We'll hit save and much, much faster way of looking through and sorting through the footage based off of these columns here. Really nice addition. So if I want to sort all of my, my B-Raw clips to one section, that's a great way to do that. So what's your favorite new feature? Let me know that down in the comments. Hey, my name is Chadwick. I appreciate you so much as always. And because there's so much more to learn, I'll see you in the next video.